Hello there, we are going to continue with our book 11 by Tom Rogers. Today we are going to be reading just one chapter called Missing, and the time is 11.22 a.m. Now we can assume uh, who this chapter is about when it says missing based on how we ended chapter 14. He was looking around and he couldn't see his little sister Nunu. So let's go ahead and begin. Chapter 15, 11.22 a.m., Missing. Alex sprinted up the concrete stairs to the upper playground. Be there, be there, be there, he whispered, taking the steps two at a time. He'd already made a hurried deal with the universe. If he took the steps two at a time, she'd be there. When he reached the top, the playground was empty. There was nobody in sight. There was no sign of Nunu anywhere. He called out tentatively, Nunu? He tried again louder, Nunu? He shaded his eyes and scanned the park. Down at the ball field, something was in the dugout, caught his attention. He sprinted over. It was his backpack lying on the bench. Now, remember, that's where he had left her, where he um, had last seen her. She was playing the game in the dugout. But there was no Nunu. Alex turned in a circle, confused. This doesn't make any sense, he thought. Nunu never left his side. Most of the time, he couldn't get rid of her. How could she just disappear? Alex felt panic well up inside him as his brain jumped right to the worst case scenario. Stranger danger. They'd been taught it a thousand times at school. Stranger danger. Their parents recited over and over. So she had to know not to talk to strangers, but his parents also taught Alex to watch after his sister when they were out together. If he could forget, so could she. He tried to think back to when he last noticed her. It was at the end of the ball game when she was playing with the Game Boy. He hadn't seen her since then. Alex swallowed hard to keep from being sick. He felt a nudge on his leg and looked down. The dog had brought him a stick. No, no, we have to find Nunu. Alex pushed on, searching the bathrooms and double-checking the playground. He ran across a huge grassy expanse of the soccer field. Rex loped around him and kept bringing him sticks, looking hurt when Alex ignored him. Alex turned back to the park and cupped his hands to his mouth. No, no. Rex tipped his head back and unleashed a long, serious howl. Shh, be quiet so I can hear. But every time Alex yelled, the dog howled right along with him. Now, I think the dog was doing that because he was trying to also find Nunu. That's just my opinion. All right. They made their way around the edge of the park. Alex kept his eyes peeled. Come on, Rex, look for Nunu. All right, I want to stop right there because remember when we uh, had an idiom? Uh, we had that idiom before in reading class, kept their eyes peeled, and we talked about that in class. And um, when you have your eyes peeled, uh, that means that you're looking carefully, okay? So he has his eyes peeled trying to look for her. Okay. Come on, Rex, look for Nunu. The dog didn't seem to understand. He just kept getting tangled in Alex's legs and then veering off to sniff around benches and dig inside trash barrels. Alex forged his way along a wild and overgrown creek bed, crisscrossing the muddy banks of the stream until it abruptly disappeared through a metal grate into a slime slick culvert running under a four lane road that bridged the far edge of the park. Alex tried the grate. It was welded shut. He peered inside, but couldn't see anything. Next to the culvert, a dusty maintenance yard ran all the way back into the shadows under the four-lane bridge. On the left, huge concrete pipes from an older sewer repair job lay scattered around. Over to the right stood an old shed, the door hanging slightly open. Alex squeezed through a hole in the fence and hurried toward the shed. Please be there. Please be there. He reached the door and yanked it open. The shed was empty. Up to now, Alex had been able to hold it together. Now his knees started to shake. Tears burned in his eyes. Behind him, Rex began barking furiously. Alex backed out of the shed. The dog was on the other side of the maintenance yard with his head inside a four foot wide concrete pipe. Tail rigid, back feet bouncing nervously. Alex sprinted over and shoved his head in beside the dogs. Nunu took one hand off the Game Boy controls and waved. Hi, Alex. 
Alex grabbed her by the hand and dragged her sideways out of the pipe. What are you doing in there? I'm playing Dora. You ran away. I couldn't see the screen in the sun. I've been looking everywhere for you. Why are you yelling at me? I'm not yelling. Once again, Rex howled right along with Alex. When Alex and Nunu saw what was happening, they both got the giggles and couldn't stop. So Rex stopped howling and let loose a happy bark. Sorry I yelled at you, said Alex. It's okay. I was worried. Not me. Alex rolled his eyes, then grinned at his dog, who was scratching intently behind one ear, like nothing had happened. You're lucky I've got the greatest rescue dog ever. Hey, crybaby. Okay, I'm not turning the page right now. I want you guys to make an inference of who is yelling, hey, crybaby, based on the last chapter, what we had. Okay, I bet you probably said the bullies who were picking on him. Uh, Probably, I'm assuming it's probably Jordan because he seems like he's the leader of the pack. All right, let's see if we're right. Alex spun around. Jordan and his goons were up on the bridge. Calvin seemed to be arguing with Jordan, but Jordan shoved him aside and then whipped his arm forward. The beer bottle was in midair before Alex realized Jordan had thrown it. No! The bottle hit with a sickening thud followed by the sound of shattering glass. The dog yelped once, and then his front legs buckled. All right, let's go back to that page at the very top, um, on the top of this page. It said, Alex spun around, and Jordan and his goons were up on the bridge. Calvin seemed to be arguing with Jordan. So it sounds to me like Calvin is not getting along with Jordan, which Calvin is one of his sidekicks. And it sounds like he's trying to keep him from doing something. But Jordan is obviously upset, probably because the dog was going after him earlier, that um, Jordan's not listening to his buddy Calvin um, because it said that he shoved him aside and then whipped his arm forward. So it sounds to me like Calvin or Jordan isn't even getting along with his uh, sidekicks that he has. All right, we'll pick up with Chapter 16 tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.